there always seemed to be mysterious accidents in Terran space. Ships would go missing without a trace, or would be damaged by seemingly nothing. The in-flight data recorders never showed a hint of anything on sensors. It was quite a strange phenomenon. The few witnesses that made it back alive told increasingly fantastical tales. In Lyhar Mythos, there existed guardian spirits, ghosts who died unjustly and chose to stay behind to protect the innocent. They were said to be vicious in their righteous anger, and of course, invisible to living. The survivors spread rumors that the soul system was haunted by these spirits, who would decimate any evildoers who dared to approach Earth. A few recurring elements often popped up in such stories. Claims of seeing a slight shimmer in the void of space or hearing an angry human voice over the communication systems were common. Their ships would then be either torn apart from all directions or incapacitated and boarded by shadowy figures. At first, the legends did not convince many people. The word of criminals and peasants was not exactly reliable, especially when they were making far-fetched claims. That all changed when our government sent three military reconnaissance ships to scout out a potential conquest of Earth and they just vanished. Word leaked out to the press of the failed operation, and suddenly, those ghost stories had a lot more credibility among spacefarers. Smugglers, merchants, and slave transports alike began to avoid the soul system, for fear that they too would disappear. Taking a longer route increased expenditure on fuel, but it beat being snatched up by the spirits. I was not one of the believers, though. Ghosts didn't exist, and religion was a hoax, as far as I was concerned. These tales had to be exaggerated, little more than the results of trauma and overactive imaginations. After mulling it over, I guessed that the Terrans had set up some sort of minefield in their systems. I shared my hypothesis with the other generals. I suggested we proceeded with the invasion and simply deploy drones ahead of our fleet to activate any traps. After a brief discussion, they unanimously agreed to my plan and selected me to head the mission. It had been my idea, after all. Deployment meant some risk to my life, but I was confident in the strategic advice I had given. If this worked out, I would be hailed as a hero throughout the Empire. Conquering an inhabited world was one of the greatest achievements a general could attain. Our fleet spread out into arc formation as we entered the Soul System, and all seemed to be going smoothly. I was on board the command vessel at the rear of the procession, relaying orders to the skirmishers. We unleashed a flurry of drones to lead the way, and sure enough, a series of explosions took them out. No vessels other than our own were in sight or on radar. That must mean I had been right about the mines. If we entered now before they had time to reactivate them, surely the way would be clear. The thought that the ghost stories might be true briefly crossed my mind. The explosions that obliterated the drones had been oddly precise for prearranged traps. But I quickly chided myself for such foolishness. Ghosts were just superstition. I ordered the fleet onward. There was no sign of trouble, just an eerie silence. Something just felt off about this, and I wasn't sure what it was. Suddenly, communications with the frontline skirmishers were cut off. Our sensors detected an energy burst consistent with an electromagnetic pulse, seemingly originating from nowhere. Plasma bolts scorched our fighters from both flanks, disintegrating their hull plating and shielding. I could see the atmosphere venting from several now crippled spacecraft on the viewport, but I could not see our attackers. Shoot them! I barked at my weapons officer. Shoot who, he replied. General, there's no hostiles on the targeting system to engage. Panic bubbled in my chest as I realized we had lost contact with the majority of our fleet in a matter of seconds. The most advanced warships in the Imperial fleet had been picked off with such ease by an invisible enemy. I couldn't fathom how this was possible, but supernatural forces almost seemed to be the only plausible explanation. I turned to order a retreat, but a powerful blast jolted the command ship at that instant. The lights went out, and the artificial gravity failed as the computer diverted all power to shields. I felt my feet float off the ground, and tried to latch onto the desk to hold myself down. Even at max defense output, the shields were barely holding. Mind you, this was the Empire's flagship, designed to withstand the direct hit of a nuclear missile. The only thing that could penetrate our defenses would be sustained antimatter torpedo fire. But antimatter weapons were quite rare to find on the battlefield, as they were extremely difficult and expensive to manufacture. What species would devote so much money and resources to weaponry? It was impractical. Now spirits, on the other hand, had no such financial limitations. Perhaps they could even summon state-of-the-art ghost ships at will. It was all starting to add up. I didn't think I could remain in denial much longer. The shields collapsed, and the latest antimatter volley connected with the engine room. 
Our attackers had known exactly where to aim, taking out central power and our warp drive. Weapons, navigation, communications, all offline. Only basic functions such as life support remained online, powered by the emergency power generator. With shields no longer operational, the generator also trickled energy back to lighting and artificial gravity. I was already running when my feet slammed back onto the floor, calling out to abandon ship. There were escape pods in the hangar. Our vessel was doomed, but perhaps a few of us could jet away and signal for help. Or at least, we could warn our command. Smoke seeped down from the upper decks as I dashed through a series of winding corridors and narrow stairwells. The evacuation route had not been well planned out. I doubted any of the ship's creators imagined it would ever be needed. Coughing, I stumbled into the hangar. A discordant grinding sound hummed in the air as I entered. Sparks were flying from the airlock, etching faint orange lines into the metal. It looked as though someone were trying to make an incision point for boarding. I shuddered to think who that someone would be. I took a few steps forward, beckoning for my men to follow. Perhaps if we hurried, we could get out before they got in. But any hopes I had of reaching the escape pods melted away as the airlock fell inward. There was no breaching tunnel to keep the ship pressurized, and yet we could still breathe. All I saw were stars and a strange shimmering effect, as though reality itself had been altered. Figures clad head to toe in black stepped through the breach. They seemed to materialize out of thin air, pointing their weapons at us. The sheer terror I felt nearly froze me in place, but somehow I remembered how to move my limbs. I raised my arms high above my head, every muscle in my body trembling. We surrender! Please don't hurt us, I shouted. Well, I tried to shout at least. It came out as more of a whimper. The last thing I remember before I passed out was one of the shadowy beings approaching and pulling a bag over my head. Colonel Daniel Kelly had stopped by for a progress report on the interrogation. A group of officers were watching through a one-way mirror as intelligence officer grilled the captive alien general. So far, they had picked up a lot of crucial information on the Lihar Empire's military capabilities, tactics, and plans from him. It was strange how cooperative he was. He pleaded with human interrogators not to curse his soul on more than one occasion, promising he would tell them whatever they wanted to know. The groveling and hysterics did not seem becoming of an officer of any army. This sniveling guy is one of their highest-ranking generals? Colonel Kelly asked in a derisive tone. Why in the hell is he acting like this? Lieutenant Ross Schaefer smiled. Well, sir, apparently the Xenos have no concept of stealth technology. Since our cloaked ships were invisible to them, they think they were attacked by ghosts. Seriously? In that case, we should send him back. If he tells his buddies about the ghosts, maybe they'll call off the invasion. The colonel tapped on the glass twice to signal for the interrogators to exit the room. He stepped into the cell, eyeing the gray-skinned alien in his custody. The Lihar general cowered under his gaze. Well, it looks like today is your lucky day. We're going to send you home on one condition, Colonel Kelly said. The alien looked at him earnestly. I'll do anything. We have a message for the Empire, and we want you to relay it. Tell them in these exact words. Stay the fuck away from Earth. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Everything I used is in the description below. If there's a story you'd like to hear narrated, let me know and I'll reach out to the author and see if we can make that happen. Thanks again. It's a scary world out there. But remember, to be brave and look up, to seek the stars.